बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम द कोर्स टाइटल इज नाइनटीन सेंचुरी इंग्लिश नॉवल एंड दिस लेक्चर इज अबाउट चैप्टर ट्वेंटी वन टू चैप्टर फोर्टी फाइव ऑफ द मेयर ऑफ कैस्टर ब्रिज द लाइफ एंड डेथ ऑफ अ मैन ऑफ करेक्टर द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वॉज अबाउट फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी चैप्टर्स ऑफ द नॉवल एंड दिस लेक्चर इज अबाउट द रिमेनिंग चैप्टर ऑफ द नॉवल chapter 21 in the chapter 21 the unknown lady who is now a companion of elizabeth jane rents a house called high place hall this episode is interesting and ambiguous as well interesting in a sense that in this chapter henchard entered in high place hall and elizabeth jane departs and ambiguous in a way that when elizabeth jane entered in the house through the open doors she at once realized her boldness and she quickly exits through the back door at the same moment henchard entered in the high place hall in this chapter the stranger the unknown lady reveals her identity and she is miss templeman when elizabeth jane discussed her matter of leaving the house of henchard and and the decision of living another house was discussed michael henchard allowed her to do so but before leaving before Uh, leaving the house of michael henchard he gave her money it is important to note that henchard constantly offer some sort of monetary payment or financial arrangement to fill his gap of emotional support when he first deserted lucetta he sent her money when susan came back to the town he gave her money and now when elizabeth jane moves out he gives her he is giving her money now chapter number 22 this chapter 22 tells us about high place hall residents identity and life first it tells us about miss templeman that who is she she is an actual lucetta and he and she changed her name because she uh, has been left a fortune by her late aunt temples templeman and she uh, changed her name in order to avoid in order to save herself from the past scandal this chapter also tells us about the life of elizabeth jane she was uh, happy there because she thought that miss templeman is her new companion the house in which they are living is at the center of the caster bridge and through the window of their house they can easily see about every, they, they can easily they can easily see what is happening outside the house what is in what is happening in caster bridge here in this chapter Elizabeth Jane and Lucetta they both shared their stories with each other and Lucetta shared with Elizabeth Jane about her past when Elizabeth Jane tells her that Henchard dislikes her as a daughter Lucetta realizes that her scheming is not valid and she was very upset on this and she hastily sends elizabeth jane out of the house 
and sends Henchard a note asking him to meet her. So this chapter opens with the hope of reconciliation and ends on a visitor. This also shows us that in the previous chapter why Michael Henchard entered in the high place hall because he came to meet Lucetta. Lucetta is Miss Temple Man. Chapter 23, as the previous chapter ends on a visitor, so it was expected that Michael Henchard came to see Lucetta, but in actual, it was Donald Farfrey who came to see Elizabeth Jane. Why he came? Because he had the permission of Henchard now. And another important thing is that he has settled his business and he had in and he has enough money to marry and support a wife that's why he wanted to renew his relationship with Elizabeth Jane interestingly the meeting between the expected meeting between Hanchard and Lucetta turned into a first meeting between Lucetta and Farfrey and in a very short time period in just one meeting they both started liking each other we also noticed one thing in this chapter that lucetta is a very opportunist and a strong-willed lady through her observation of mr farfrey thomas hardy reveals the character of farfrey as well in that the observation of Lucetta, Farfrey has two sides. One is commercial and the other one is romantic. So this chapter, so this chapter is about the first meeting between Lucetta and Mr. Farfrey, which automatically put Michael Henchard and Elizabeth Jane on marginal which automatically put these two characters on side moving forward chapter number 24 as they live in the high place hall a central place of the castor bridge uh, both ladies used to see outside the window both ladies used to see what is happening in the castor bridge and they both were eagerly waiting for saturday because it's a market day and they both wait to have to catch a glimpse of far free from the window this chapter also tells us the the advancement of technology as well because a new agricultural implement, a drill, is introduced in Castor Bridge. And both ladies, Lucetta and Elizabeth Jane, go to see the machine. In this chapter, when Hanchard approaches them, Elizabeth Jane introduces him to Lucetta. And he whispers in Lucetta, he whispers Lucetta, you refuse to see me and this become very, very ambiguous for Elizabeth Jane. And after that, they met far free while examining the drill and Elizabeth Jane noticed the familiarity between Lucetta and far free. And she at once realized that there is something deeper in between the two of them. This chapter is uh, interesting because it gives us the example of modernism versus traditionality because the introduction of drill tells us that new ways, 
new technologies make their ways in castor bridge and traditions obviously is going on one side so it also symbolizes the lives of michael henchard and donald farfrey donald farfrey is a man of science whereas michael henchard always relies on tradition so the introduction of drill tells us that new things new people new characters are coming and old school of thoughts are moving on are moving towards marginalization they are going towards one side this chapter also in this chapter uh, lucetta unfolds part of her past history to elizabeth jane and she narrates the incident as though it has happened that to someone else and asks elizabeth jane what this person sh should do under the circumstances but elizabeth jane is very sensible and strong lady she knows that lucetta while referring to someone else is in actual talking about her own self as a result elizabeth jane remains silent refuses she refuses to answer any question in this chapter elizabeth jane feels sorrow she is disappointed and sad because she left the house of henchard because he was because he was misbehaving with him with her that's why he that's why she decided to move towards this place and here elizabeth jane was used by lucetta she just used her in order to trace henchard now in the chapter number 25 we have four characters elizabeth jane farfrey michael henchard and lucetta interestingly these all four characters make a love triangle in this chapter past is like a shadow which is continuously haunting the present in this chapter the pain loneliness and deprivations tell us about the inner feelings and life of elizabeth jane in this chapter one day henchard calls on lucetta and tells her he will marry her as soon as custom permits henchard noticed one thing that lucetta is not giving him any positive response he observed this thing and he left her house in a very dejected state this again tells us about the opportunist side of lucetta that she came to the to castor bridge just to get her place in the house of mayor and now after meeting hanchard she get attracted towards farfrey and she is a woman who realizes on her own passion and instincts she does not follow social and moral conventions the role of fate is very evident in this novel continually it had happened that what she had desired had not been granted her and that which had been granted her for she had not desired this these words from the book tell us about the feelings pain loneliness and deprivations of elizabeth jane who is unaware about many important things of the past and present as well 
Lucetta's indifference to Henshaw forced him to think and to suspect a rival. Hanshad was unaware about his love rival. That's why one day he discussed his this matter with Farfree because previously he also shared his past secrets with him. And Farfree was unaware about Lucetta as well. So he tells him that he owes her nothing. But Henshard's suspicion is confirmed when he meets Farfree in Lucetta's house. So here the, here the business rival is also a love rival as well. Now uh, Henshard made a bad decision based upon the prediction of a weather forecaster he bought all the cons in caster bridge unfortunately the weather clears up and he and he was forced to sell his con at a low price in order to meet his application so this became a big business loss for henshard henshard is a short and hot henshard is a short tempered man and he has the bad habit of putting things on others' shoulders. When he lost Susan, he, she, he put all the responsibility on her. And now, due to his bad decision, he lost a huge amount. Of, uh, he lost his huge amount. And here he put all the decision on Job. Georgia Job. What? Think that this chapter tells that Michael Henshaw is not a man is not a bad man by heart, but his bad temperament always made him an evil person. And when he insulted Joshua Job, and it was not the first insult, Joshua Job decided to take revenge. This chapter tells us about one interesting thing that man cannot control nature and this chap and this book puts emphasis on the role of nature and the role of fate in one's life chapter number 27 again draws a comparison between michael henchard and Farfree. Farfree is a shrewd businessman. He buys corn when prices were when prices are low, and it automatically flourish his business. This chapter tells us about two characteristics of both businessmen. One is the diplomatic techniques used by Farfree and the other one is emotional and impatient side of Hanshad. This chapter also tells us about an incident. It was a minor incident but it uh, increases jealousy in Henshard's heart. In actual, uh, Elizabeth Jane and Lucetta, from their window, they saw two wagons. One was of Henshard and other one was of Farfree. The collision of two wagons, they saw it from their windows and they came to testify that Henchard's man was on the wrong side. Somehow the matter got resolved. But 
that things remain disturbed within the heart of Henchard because he made it an issue of his ego. And here in this episode, Michael Henchard saw Lucetta and Farfree together. This chapter is again and again telling us about Henchard's impatient side. He is unable to control his emotions and when he saw this couple together, he threatened Lucetta that he will disclose his past in front of his lover. This chapter tells us about the good side of Elizabeth Jane. Though Lucetta has replaced her in Farfree's affection, but still she maintained her dignity. So this chapter, a small incident between two wagons. In actual, tell us an incident between Lucetta and Hancher because the union of Lucetta and Farfree is a big problem for Hancher. Chapter number 28 is known as a most dramatic chapter of this book. It's another day and Michael Hancher is uh, taking over as magistrate. He, he has to deal a case where an old woman that is brought forward for creating a mess. The woman was not, the woman was very familiar for Henshaw. He thought he had seen this woman somewhere, but he was unable to recollect his memories. This chapter basically started with a very humorous scene but ended on a tragedy. The tragedy is again of the past because the woman reveals herself as the formative woman and she is the witness of the tragic episode when Susan and Elizabeth Jane were purchased by Newson. And here she exposed Hanshard, revealed his past and claimed that a man who is, this man has no right to judge or pass any comment. Hanshard does not deny this allegation and left the court. Though this chapter is very short, but this chapter again tells us two important things. One is the good side of Henshaw that he accepts his past deeds. This is one of the noble aspect of Henshaw that he left the courtroom. But this chapter also tells us about Lucetta's character as well. As she changed her name to Miss Templeman in order to avoid, in order to save herself from the past scandal, so she is very concerned about the reputation of Henshaw now. And on the advice of Elizabeth Jane, she visited Port Brady to the seaside just for the sake of relaxation. Now chapter number 29. This chapter is about bull episode. Elizabeth Jane and Lucetta. After Lucetta returned to Castor Bridge, they both were walking when a bull charges them. And in this episode, they were saved by Henshaw. Lucetta really appreciated the efforts of Henshaw because he saved her from a bull, from the attack of a bull. 
In this chapter, Henchard again showed his affection towards Lucetta, and he suggested to have a long engagement instead of an immediate marriage. Lucetta was very happy at this news, and she wanted to pay his kindness with money, which Henchard refused to accept. This chapter also tells us about the secret marriage of Farfri and Lucetta. This was very heart wrenching for Michael Henshaw, and this again infuriates anger in him. So this chapter, in this chapter, uh, firstly. a uh, michael henchard saved lucetta from a bull and later he himself turned into a wounded bull now the the four characters and their love to uh, lucetta seek farfi's permission to let elizabeth jane live with them which he readily gives but elizabeth jane when she came to know about the secret marriage of farfri and lucetta she decided to move out because the first thing is that she was still in love with farfri and the second thing is that lucetta and elizabeth jane are two opposite characters she cannot uh, rely on lucetta any longer and that's why she finds an alternative lodging for herself leaves a note for lucetta and departs immediately and this chapter also tells us about one another characteristic of lucetta that she made a promise with henchard and she broke that one next chapter chapter number 31 again focuses on the emotion versus rationality in this chapter the role of fate again plays its evident role that once the proud henchard is now a bankrupt henchard and here again elizabeth jane sup- consoled her supported uh, elizabeth jane consoled him supported him he lost his everything his home his fortune and his future wife so ironically he once he used to humiliate job and now he is living within the house of job so the fate plays its very cruel role in the life of henchard in every aspect farfri has replaced henchard and proved himself far better than the mayor of casterbridge business of far free continues to flourish and he prospers he uh, achieved all those things which once henchard enjoyed this chapter gives us the imagery of two lower bridges and this imagery uh, is to depict the emotions and inner feelings of henchard in this chapter one important thing is that now lucetta and farfri has shifted to mayor's old house but this chapter also gives us a generous side of farfri that he 
being a kind man offers henshed accommodation in his old house he declined this offer but in this whole chapter the empathy of elizabeth jane is very evident she nursed when in uh, when elizabeth J when henshed was not feeling well elizabeth jane nursed him back to health and when he fully recovered henshed started working as a day laborer for far free so things are uh, going in a very ironic turn a boss a, a, uh, the manager is now a boss and the mayor is now a day laborer this chapter tells us about the reconciliation with uh, between elizabeth jane and henshed okay now the next chapter so once a boss is now a day laborer and after 21 years hanchard again started drinking regularly and uh, he started visiting regular drinking regularly at the three mariners inn and when he, and uh, one said sunday when he was again in his unconscious state he saw lucetta and farfri together and in his again emotional unstable situation he instead insisted the choir to sing a song that was basically a curse against a man and here in the first chapter henshed lost his senses and he started telling about his unhappy marriage and in this in this chapter hanchard was again disturbed and he told the company that he is asking to sing this song because this is a curse and he and for him this curse is meant for farfri so we can say that not only hanchard's past misdeeds are approaching are a source of trouble for him so is with lucetta as well because her past in the form of henshed and the love letters which she wrote to henshed is still haunting her happy married life in this chapter again elizabeth jane plays a very positive role she observed the rivalry between hanchard and farfri and she also noticed and observed the aggressive and and the bad intentions of hanchard that's why she decided to tell farfri about the bad intentions of hanchard one thing is very important that is the positive role of elizabeth jane when michael henshard was in need elizabeth jane helped her helped him nursed him and now when he noticed that farfri is in danger she at once decided to talk him about this issue in this chapter Elizabeth Jane tells Farfrey and warns him about Henshaw's intention to harm him. Though Farfrey does not take it serious, but later he discussed this issue with lawyer Joyce and he told him that how Henshaw openly threatened to ruin Farfrey. this was very troublesome this was very problematic for farfri first farfri decided to move from this castlebridge place because lucetta was also very ter- 
terrified. But in the same episode, we have a new mayor and that is Farfri as he has replaced Michael Henchard in every section. So he also replaced him by becoming a new mayor. So naturally it is impossible for him to leave Casterbridge now. In this episode, again, Lucetta meets Henchard and asks him to return her love letters. It was not in the mind of Henchard. Uh, and he visited his former house and asks for Farfi to take them out of the safe. Here, Henchard started reading the letters in a loud voice in front of Farfi. But we know that the central character of this novel is a short-tempered man, but he is not an evil man. He read the letters in a loud voice, but he still didn't disclose that they are from Lucetta. So this chapter tells us about the decency of Hanshad and it also tells us about the future of Farfri because he is he is obviously going to flourish more he is again going to make his he is again going to become a star here as a mayor henchard is henchard is acting like a nightmare for lucetta while he was reading the letters to farfri lucetta came down and when she heard her own words being read aloud it was really disturbing for her and she, the, and the very next morning she requested Henshad to meet her at the ring in the evening. The ring is a same place where Susan and Henshad met when Susan came to the Castor Bridge. So, so the novel is fabricated in a way that past is again an again again taking them to it's it's just like past is catching their present it's overcoming them it is haunting them so the when henchard reached at the ring it reminded him of the susan and here again when henchard saw uh, lucetta at the ring he was guilty on his thoughts and he desired to and he desired not to avenge anyone and he agreed on the point that he agreed on a notion to return the letters to her the next morning so we can say that uh Henshard is a man who doesn't want to hurt or humiliate anyone from his heart in actual things in his temperament in his short temperament things always moved in in wrong direction in the very next chapter to uh, in this chapter the first thing is request of job job basically wants to work as a working partner for far free and for that he requested Lucetta to recommend him. But when Lucetta does not give any encouragement, he started blackmailing her, saying that he is familiar with Jersey. The same job who first threatened Lucetta when he came back to the cottage, Henchard gave him a sealed packet to give Lucetta. It was the it was the letters she has requested. In his anger, Job opened the letters, and when he read the letters, uh, Job he decided to give these letters to Lucetta. But when he met Nancy Mockridge and the other people of the town, they urged him. to accompany them to Mixon Lane 
where an in called Peter's finger is located. And when there, on the request of formative women, Job opened the letters and read and led letters to everyone, they realized that things are between Lucetta and Hanshard. And they decided to arrange a rite, which is form of for entertainment that exposes a wife's unfaithfulness to her husband. This chapter tells us about haves and the have-nots. Basically, Casterbridge is a society of class-conscious people. And those who have haves, those who are privileged, they are considered as villains by those who are, who are inferior, by those who are known as have-nots. So here in this episode, the have-nots, they decided to cause problems for those who have haves. It, it's just like they have a weak point of the new mayor and the old mayor as well. So they decided to plant a conspiracy. And now, Farfrey is a young mayor of this town. And uh, here... In this chapter, one thing uh, that reaches to Casterbridge that a royal personage will pass through the town and the council meets a day before to arrange the details of procedure. Henshaw being a ex-mayor, he wanted to participate in the meeting, in the reception, but Farfrey refused. So Hanchard again decided to welcome the mayor himself. At the appointed time, Hanchard steps before the royal personage. But it's Farfrey's duty because he is a mayor. So he grabs Hanchard by shoulder and pushes him away. It was very humiliating for Hanshred and this again added jealousy in Hanshred's heart. This chapter is uh, very important in a sense that Lucetta and her past again comes in her life through the skimity right planned by job and other have nots and other common people of the town so uh, the episode of a uh, visit of royal personage and jealous henshard and far free grabs him and put him on side this is this shows that now far Far free is a mere and Hanchard has no place. But this right is again going to cause problems in the life of ex mere and the new mere as well. After being humiliated by Far free and Lucetta, Hanchard became aggressive. He became he became enraged. He decided to engage far free in a wrestling match and it is a match to the death as far as Henshard is concerned. Henshard challenged far free to wrestle with him even though Henshard's arm was tied he overpowered in far free and soon has him at his mercy. But Henshard suddenly realized that this is not his way he cannot give him the decisive push down the trap door. Overcame by his own shame and regret, Henshard lets let Farfrey Free go. And later he apologized Farfrey who had left the town. And here in this episode, Henshard was so much overwhelmed with his own misery with his own feelings that he didn't pay any attention to the clamoring coming from the town. So uh, 
this thing is that hindshot was so much engrossed in his own feelings that he didn't notice that what is happening outside so the wrestling in the wrestling match after that wrestling match farfried intended to go to budmouth when he is about to leave vital arrives with an unsigned note asking him to come wedderbury The anonymous letter was written by Longways and other men who worked for Farfrey to get him out of the way for the evening entertainment. At the same evening, when Lucetta saw that ride, and she saw her self-enhanced effigies prated on a donkey, it was an unbearable moment for him, and she falls into a fit. This chapter is an internal comparison in between Hanshard and Lucetta because Hanshard's past has caught up him with Hanshard was so much engrossed in his past that he doesn't that he didn't pay the attention that Lucetta's past is going to cause problems in his present and she lost she falls into a fit and she was really afraid that what will happen when farfrey will came to know about this at the moment when he was out of the town when hanshard saw this he immediately rushed towards the house of lucetta and uh, here no one trusts hanshard because of his bad reputation and a few previous incidents uh, in this chapter lucetta confesses all things to her husband and dies in the early hours of the day it was a very disturbing episode because no one believed henshard when he when he tries to tell everyone that farfri uh, is going to melstock and wedderbury not budmouth and when he decided to tell farfri about the uh, bad condition of elusetta even farfri didn't believe him and all these ambiguities turned into another miserable situation and that is the death of lucetta but here in all the ambiguities and complexities elizabeth jane proved herself as a good or a noble lady and uh, even in her and even hanshard observed her goodness and he desired her and and showed his willingness to accept her as his daughter and helisbert jane and hensher they started living together but things never go in right direction for hensher when elizabeth while elizabeth jane's was sleeping the sea captain calls on henchard again it was a visitor who wanted to meet henchard before as well and he was the man in actual he was a real father of elizabeth jane he was richard newson and he said that after the death of susan he is very concerned about his daughter but Henshard was afraid. He just started reconciliation. He just started making his things better with Elizabeth Jane, and now the entrance of Richard Newson made him selfish. And he said that not only Susan but Elizabeth Jane Newson has died. 
Richard Newson accepted this thing and left the house of Henchard. In this chapter, Henshard uh, thought that God has sent Elizabeth Jane with this, with such a big heart and with kindness, in order to heal the wounds of Henshard. In this chapter, Henshard and Elizabeth Jane, it's they both started understanding each other and. This chap in the previous chapters and as well as the upcoming chapters confirms one thing that Elizabeth Jane is a very generous lady. In this chapter, Farfree proves himself as a very kind and, thought and thoughtful man. After uh, much reflection and consideration, he decided not to punish the people who were involved in that crime. The, his intention was to save Lucetta. Said his intention was to save Lucetta's reputation even after her death. And in this chapter, Henshard and Elizabeth Jane, as they were living together, but Henshard was not in a good condition, the two council, headed by Farfrey, decided to help Henshard. They purchased a small root and seed business for him to manage, and he accepted it. We cannot forget this thing that things are still not moving towards right way because now Henchard is in the dread of Newson's return. And uh, he watches for him regularly and he noticed that Farfrey and Elizabeth Jane, they are meeting secretly, which greatly bothered him. Every time he felt that every time he he felt that Farfree is his rival first his business then his love and now he comes within the life of his stepdaughter again and again in his uh, emotional state as he is a man of emotions Unlike Farfree, who is a man of reason, he seriously thought of telling Farfree of Elizabeth's chain illegitimate birth. But he cannot bring himself to do this. And uh, this chapter again confirms one thing that Michael Henshard always decides to do something but he never intentionally hurt or he never intentionally caused problems for others by heart he is not a villain but his actions always made him make him a villain now the thing is that elizabeth jane is naive of all she is unaware about many things from the past and even she is unaware of her present as well. And every time she proved herself as a generous, virtuous and kind-hearted lady. Now the Castor Bridge, the town. Uh, one important thing, the gossips within Castor Bridge and the people, the common people, they usually symbolize chorus of that's chorus because chorus in Greek tragedies used to comment, foreshadow, or depict about the past of characters. So we can say that chorus is like a commentary. So here in this play, the people of Castor Bridge are working as are act, are playing the role of chorus. This chorus now started talking about the affair between Farfrey and Elizabeth Jane. And when Henshard, he was a bit disturbed due to the intimacy between Farfree and Elizabeth Jane. One day he was 
he spies new sun through the telescope and he thought and he observed that he was waiting for someone and the idea of truth knowing by elizabeth jane was very frightening for michael henshaw and uh, in this letter and in this chapter elizabeth jane received an anonymous letter asking her to meet and meet the writer and she is under the impression that the sender is a relative of far free and asked henchard if she can go henchard gave him permission even though he realized the letter is probably from newson this letter this note received by elizabeth jane reminded us of another note which was written by susan henchard so interestingly the first note was written by susan henchard because she wanted to pair the couple elizabeth jane and farfri together she wanted to pair them together and now as the novel coming towards its end elizabeth jane received another note and this note is by his real father Henchard was very depressed because the the things the truth now is going to be come in front of Elizabeth Jane and he decided to leave Casterbridge and when uh, in the same chapter when Elizabeth Jane goes to the farfree's house in the evening she met newson there and he told her about henchard's lie she was so shocked by the news that she decided that she will never forgive henchard and this chapter ends on father daughter union and also on the separation of father and daughter michael henchard again fails in proving himself as a best father and that's why elizabeth jane decided not to rely not to talk on this man or uh, not to talk about this man again and she focused on only one thing and that is her marriage in this uh, in the next chapter chapter number 24 sorry 44 henchard is now is in is spending the next two months pursuing his old vocation of inherent hate raser he never goes far from casterbridge because he wanted to live near elizabeth jane and from a road uh, wagon talk about he came to know about a wedding on martin's day and henchard was aware that it was it it will be the wedding of mayor and elizabeth jane uh this chapter tells us one thing that michael henchard started his life from a hate raser this chapter this book opened when michael henchard was a hate raser and he was looking for a job now as this novel is coming towards its its end michael henchard is now a hate raser again and he is in his self willed loneliness he he is living alone due and he posed this loneliness on him the wedding day came and michael henchard bought a pres- a present for elizabeth jane but he but when elizabeth jane came face to face with him there is an awkwardness in the meeting michael henchard uh, 
reached the former house he entered through the kitchen he left the bird and cage under a bush outside but here the but when elizabeth jane met her met him there was a this, that was a very awkward scene and he formally called him as mr henshard she also upbraided him for his deception he but michael henshard didn't utter a word in his defense whereas he promised that he will never come again in front of this lady it was a happy day but there was a broken man was also there he was michael henshard he was once a proud mayor and now he was a broken man chapter number 45 it tells us about a week after the marriage of farfree and elizabeth jane and they and here elizabeth jane found a caged caged goldfinch and a month later she realized that henshard had left it there now she was over now she had overcome her emotions and she and and she and farfree searched for henshard they tried their best uh, the interesting thing is that in the opening of the book michael henshard was looking for susan and elizabeth jane henshard and now in the last chapter farfree and elizabeth jane they are looking for henshard they saw abel vital when they lost all the hope and they came to and that and they follow him and are informed that just half an earlier half an hour earlier henshard had died and on a very crumpled piece of paper he wrote his will which states that nobody is wished to see my dead body and that no mourners walk behind me at my my funeral and that no flowers be planted on my grave and that no men remember me so it was his will that will that his death that no one wanted to see him dead body and and that's why he said that no mourners no flowers to be planted on my grave and he signed that way it was very tragic for elizabeth jane and she felt sorrow and grief deep in her heart but later she respects she respected henshard's wishes and she spent the rest of her life in tranquility and thankfulness so here the novel ends on the death of the mayor of casterbridge the life and death of the mayor of casterbridge this novel is one of hardy's best novel because here um to the character of michael henshard hardy presented his own philosophy that happiness is just an occasional episode in general drama of pain it's the story of michael henshard he was a hay trusser in his bad habit of drinking he lost his senses and he sold his wife and daughter after that he became a mayor he pledged a promise and he kept his promise he tried to repay for his past deeds by remarrying susan but things always go against the wishes and desires of michael henshard and a man who started his life as a hay trusser died in the cottage of abelvitter 
with a will and with no mourners behind it's a very interesting story written by michael uh, it's written by thomas hardy uh michael michael henchard is the story of michael henchard is a dark tragedy in which the central character faced ruin total ruin and lonely death and when he seek for redemption it was too late and as a result of his own actions he died an outcast without reconciled himself with society or even with elizabeth jane whom he started caring like his own daughter so this was the summary of thomas hardy's famous novel the mayor of casterbridge the life and death of the mayor of casterbridge thank you so much